Okay, so what we've learned so far is how to create a mosaic uh, DEM. So now we want to do some simulation of maybe possible identifying possible watersheds that could be contaminated by specific cities. So in order to do this, um, we can create a new model. And we'll go ahead and make this model with uh, feeding it our fill DEM. And we're going to create a, so we'll go into our spatial analysis, hydrology, and we're gonna do flow accumulation and flow direction. And this output drop raster is not necessary for this model. So we'll just kind of get it out of the way. For our flow direction, our input surface is going to be our fill. And our flow direction, D8. So D8 assigns the flow direction based on D8 flow method. This assigns flow direction to the steepest downslope neighbor. OK. So for our output name, we're going to do uh, dir for direction dot tiff and we can go ahead and just feed this information here so input fill and we'll do our flow direction output as an input for our flow accumulation so flow direction raster Specify the output as flow acc.tiff. Okay, we want our float type so and store the right values. And let's go ahead and run this model. Okay, so our flow direction and our flow accumulation have run. And we can go ahead and add those to our map. So this will be the map of the flow direction. And then flow accumulation will be a map of how water accumulates and flows across the surface. Okay, so this is going to be the flow accumulation as it uh, initially pops up. Yours might not look exactly like this, but that's no problem. You can make it visually easier to see by, again, applying a gamma stretch. Maybe you only want two, but you can also change the stretch type to standard deviations. This will dramatically increase the viewability of what your streams are doing. So now you can see how the main streams are and what the lighter streams are. And we're about to recreate this in our own uh, calculation. But first, we want to associate a drainage basin with a city. So let's see how to do that. OK, so what we'll need to do this is uh, our cities. So if you hold Control and you double click, you can access your attribute table. And let's locate the city field and so uh, it's in the scheme name so let's go ahead and now we can click in and go to the properties we'll go to a definition query and we'll set our scene name to in so we'll say scene name in open parentheses and we'll get the unique values and for now we just want your alum is the city that we're going to name and we'll close this so then now we can add any name that we want to we'll verify click OK and apply now we can change the symbology make it easier to see there's your gal 
and now let's see what watersheds feed this city. Okay, so we are going to create a new model for this, and we're going to feed it our snap point, and we're also going to feed it our flow accumulation. So now we're going to add our toolbox that we need, and we're going to be using a snap pour point. And we're also going to need a watershed. So our snap pour point is going to output and feed into our watershed. So this will be our point feature, and this will be our accumulation raster. Now we can just specify our name. Okay, so I've named a snapped pour point dot tip, and we want a snap distance of 1500 meters. Go ahead and click op apply and OK, and now we can feed our snapped pour point into our point, point data. And we also want to feed it flow direction, so we'll go ahead and drag that in and we'll put that as our flow direction. Go ahead and name it. So I've named mine year gal I'm not tiff. And we'll go ahead and apply and okay. Uh, actually so this uh, this power point field is just gonna be value. So now we just need to run it. Okay, so now that we have run our model, we'll go ahead and save and close it. So now if we add in our Yerg alum watershed, we can see the watersheds that is going to contribute to this pour point here. Okay, so another cool thing to do with your flow accumulation layer is to define an interval for your symbology so if you want to see it every 500 and be delineated by every 500 then you can do that um, also you can do an equal interval and define your classes so that might be what I end up doing go with maybe 15 classes to get a more high resolution data set here and you can see that's not working. So we'll go ahead and do standard deviation. This is basically what we had before. So we'll go back to our stretched, use a hill shade and a gamma stretch. And there now we can see our information for our flow accumulation, but we want to see our ear alum. And we also want to use the hill shade and a gamma stretch with standard deviation. So there is our watershed for that. Uh, a snapped pour point watershed, sorry. Okay, so now let's explore a different way to look at this, and we're going to do another watershed. So we'll add another watershed, but instead, this time, we're going to feed it a flow accumulation as our, sorry, so we'll do, we'll feed it our snapped pour point as our pour point data, and our flow accumulation as input Okay, so now if we go back in, I've run two different models. I've won one watershed with the input being our snapped pour point as the flow direction, and the other I have run. So you can see actually that the flow accumulation and the watershed look very, very similar. As I go back and forth, you can kind of see this, and I've changed my symbology of our watershed here. Uh, so then you can see 
the difference. So that on top now is watershed and if you click on the other one then it is they are very very similar except their numbers are very very different so what that looks like in model builder is your snap corner point is feeding your flow direction and your flow accumulation is feeding your pore point um, kind of a unique way of doing it to see your rivers or basic uh, hydrography, but an, just a, another tool set to have. 